Greetings from Asheville, North Carolina, and welcome to Modern Gnostic. Today we're going to divert a little bit from the ongoing series we've been doing, Rambling on Gnosticism, where we're trying to kind of flesh out what are some central key elements to a modern Gnostic theology. Uh, and instead, today, uh, I have the honor and uh, the privilege to introduce um, to you the creation of a new ecclesiastical body in the independent sacramental movement, and that is uh, the formation of the Gnostic Catholic Union. And I've been thinking of the best way to introduce this to people in the video series, and I think um, the best thing I can do is um, read some writings from uh, one of our bishops, Bob McDonald. Um, and this is in a, uh, some writings that he's done for the church. And I think this is the best starting out point that I can, I can give. The Gnostic Catholic Union is an assembly of independent Catholic, independent sacramental, and Gnostic communities and individuals who have unified under a shared theology. And I would add at that point, that this is a part of what's revolutionary about this uh, development of the Gnostic Catholic Union is our theology is in development. Um, as modern Gnostics and as, as people who are, are walking the path of, of Gnosis, um, the theology should be an evolving and expanding thing. So we're unified under a shared theology, but that shared theology is not closed on either end. We recognize adherence to the sacrament of the Eucharist and the connected mysteries of the Logos as the fulcrum of our interconnection with each other. As members and congregations within the Gnostic Catholic Union, we acknowledge that we are in truth part of the divine current that courses through reality, emanating as the eternal principle of Ecclesia. We recognize this Ecclesia to be the eternal Catholic and apostolic church that binds us all together through our deliverance of the sacraments to all who seek shelter within its grace. We exist in order to share the manifestation of these great mysteries of the Holy Logos. And I think it's important for me to make a, a comment here. Um, when Bishop Bob writes about, we recognize this Ecclesia to be the eternal Catholic and apostolic church. This is what we mean when we say we are Catholics. Um, it's completely understandable that, uh, particularly in the United States, if you tell someone that you're a Catholic or you describe yourself as a Catholic, the immediate thing that people are going to think about is um, Roman Catholicism. But the truth of the matter is that Roman Catholicism is only one form of Catholicism. There are multiple forms of Catholicism. And as we were in the process of creating the Gnostic Catholic Union, one of the discussions was around the use of this word Catholic and the way in which it's, it's a very charged word. Um, some people will hear Catholic and have connotations of their childhood that maybe weren't great. Some will hear it and have connotations of their childhood that were amazing and they were deeply immersed in this, this vibrant religious culture. Um, other people, they'll hear the word and their ideas about it will be shaped by the news or by books they've read or just whatever the current in the culture is. And so it's a, it's a really charged word. But in the end we decided that it was very important to keep this word because it describes a few key fundamental things um, about the Gnostic Catholic Union and one of them is this very idea of what the Ecclesia is, what the church is. And we believe that we are an expression of that one holy apostolic Catholic Church. And by this we mean that we are universalist in the sense that this current, this one holy church, this eternal Catholic and apostolic church, um, is what Carl Jung described as uh, the secret church. So while the Gnostic Catholic Union and the churches that unite under that umbrella exist in the world as manifestations of this current, 
this current is transcendent of our current time or place. It's an initiatic church um, at its heart. And that initiation, the, the way to join the eternal Catholic and apostolic church is through the, the experience of gnosis, the varying degrees of uh, liberating initiation that occur through the practice of the sacraments and the practice of the path of um, meditation. So this is what we mean when we say we are Catholic. We belong to that tradition that is um, not contained by any building, by any um, authority manifesting in the world. So we recognize our ecclesia, our church, to be a manifestation of the eternal Catholic and apostolic church. And this binds us all together through our deliverance of the sacraments to all who seek shelter within their grace. The member communities and individuals who bind under the assembly of the Gnostic Catholic Union recognize and promote the eternal mysteries which number seven along with the hidden mysteries we recognize to be the bridal chamber. We know of the truth of the indelible nature of those mysteries and hold them to be eternal and binding. And then he lists the traditional seven, and that is uh, the mystery of baptism, the mystery of confirmation, the mystery of reconciliation, the mystery of the Eucharist, the anointing of the sick, the mystery of marriage, and the mystery of holy orders, and the hidden mystery of the bridal chamber. And I'm not going to go into a, a big description of what these different sacraments are, but I do want to also indicate that a clear aspect of our Catholicism in the sense of how we fit in the tradition of Catholicism as, it, as we see it manifesting in the world is that we, the, the root of our practice is the seven traditional sacraments. Now, um, I grew up in a, in a mildly Protestant home and, and came from a, a Protestant family and you know we would take communion at church and it was it was seen as a symbolic thing you eat the bread and you drink the wine and the bread symbolizes the body of Jesus and the wine symbolizes you know the blood of Jesus and then we would hear about Catholics and and have Catholic friends who say no no we really believe that you know the bread turns into and the wine turns into um, we practice the sacraments the way our theology views the sacraments is the sacraments are they are um, alchemical rituals and by alchemical i mean these are these are are magic rituals that the actual act of doing the ritual of Im taking in the sacred substance that is created on the altar is that these things cause a real and lasting change that transcends material understanding. So we don't view the sacraments as symbols. We view the sacraments as mysteries. Mysteries with a capital M. Um, we see them as as uh, they are a form of alchemy in the sense that they are meant to cause inner transformation. We are a communion of theurgic laity, of elevated minor order clerics, of ordained deacons, priests, and consecrated bishops who have unified in order to continue the work of our master who is the divine physician. We seek to guide all who desire into spiritual healing, emotional well-being, experience of compassionate love, and radical acceptance. We accept all who wish to receive our sacraments regardless of sexual orientation, gender preference, or marital status. We also do not deny holy orders to anyone who is truly seeking them. Um, the base of that we ordain to all levels within the church both sexes and, and whatever gender. Um, this is, this is an, uh, should be an obvious thing. We are workers in the ways of the divine current. We are children of the sacred mother and father, unified as the holy source of all life. We seek the emanations of the divine singular, the monad, who is the source point of all substance, both ethereal and physical. We recognize the magnificent of God, 
present in the many emanations as we understand that even the slightest gesture of the divine is divinity itself. What is being spoken of here is, is we seek the divine current and we work in the divine current and we recognize the manifestation of the divine in both masculine and feminine forms. And we also recognize um, we, we have a, we have a, a mythic view of the religious traditions in, of the world and we see the ways and we recognize the ways and we recognize the ways in our theology that the divine manifests in many, many forms. We are bound in the Gnostic Catholic Union to the recognition and maintenance of apostolic validity through the work of the bishops who trace their unbroken lineage back to St. Peter and ultimately to the Holy Logos as he manifested in the person of Jesus Christ who was born from the womb of our sacred Queen of Heaven, Mary, who is the God-bearer. Our apostolic lineages trace back through many paths, most notably to the Old Catholic Church, the Liberal Catholic Church, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, and the French Gnostic Church. So this is another aspect of our Catholicism and what we mean when we say we are part of the Catholic tradition. We we have holy orders, as was mentioned when we mentioned the sacraments, which means we have deacons and we have priests and we have bishops. And the idea in the Catholic tradition, when someone is made a priest, they are being initiated into a line of initiated priests that stretch back from the person who is laying hands on them and ordaining them. That that line traces back through that person ultimately all the way to the Logos in the form of Jesus Christ. Um, this includes the Apostles, it mentions St. Peter, and then it mentions the different lines that our lines of ordination come from. So um, I am an ordained Catholic priest in the Gnostic Catholic Union. Um, I am part of this line that um, came through from the from Christ down through time and largely through the old Catholic Church the liberal Catholic Church the Ukrainian Orthodox Church and the French Gnostic Church so these are the the lines that we trace our holy orders from and the Gnostic Catholic Union carries both apostolic and esoteric lines so it mentions the French Gnostic Church and these are the, the esoteric or um, the, the Gnostic lines of transmission and they, they trace back to the Gnostic Renaissance in, in France in the 1800s. And maybe we'll make another video about that later, but that's what this is talking about here is that part of our Catholicism and part of the, the system of liberation and, and enlightenment and the path of devotion and spiritual development that we offer in the Gnostic Catholic Union is, is one that, that has these opportunities for being plugged into these deeper currents of transmission. The Gnostic Catholic Union exists for you so that you can come and experience the living presence found in the bread and wine which become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We exist so that we have a foundation for all of us to grow from and so that we can bring the presence of the living way into our lives. We are eternal pilgrims who are walking the same path as you, who are ready to remind you that you are held up in the palm of God's hand. You are the divine waking up in this sleeping world. So it's a really beautiful and poetic way and I think uh, what Bishop Bob is, is expressing there is that the Gnostic Catholic Union is open and exists to be open to all um, seekers after self and the divine. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've uh, gotten something out of it. And if you are interested in the spiritual revolution that is modern Gnosticism and the way it manifests in the path of the sacraments, then I highly encourage you to get in touch with the Gnostic Catholic Union. 
We have um, existing bodies in a few different states. Uh, and by existing bodies, I mean we have, we have, if you live in Asheville, North Carolina or in the surrounding area, there is a church here um, that is practicing this path. There are, there are churches in other states doing the same thing. So get in contact with us. There might be a local body near you. And if there isn't, then you should become a spiritual revolutionary and, and consider um, the possibility of starting something where you live. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, next time we'll get back to rambling on Gnosticism. Uh, and if you're in Asheville this Wednesday at church, we're having a live discussion um, rambling on Gnosticism with a, a talk by me and then a, a ample time for questions and answers. So if you're in town, look us up. And as always, may the Holy Spirit take you from darkness into light, from ignorance into gnosis, and from death into immortality. In the name of the eternally returning hero. Amen.